there you go. This is probably good enough. Now I can give a light pull to see if it's firm. Okay, the soil is not moving, so that means it's firm. And we're good to go. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the Ego Forestry Academy channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about planting seedlings from deep pots. So, if you know what's a deep pot, you're going to recognize it. Um, if you don't, a deep pot, I think that's the name in English, is this vessel for seedlings production. And I'm going to show you exactly how to plant like a young seedling from a deep pot. And before we go right into that, uh, because well, I'm I'm allowing the the seedlings to sink in the water a bit to make sure that all of the soil in here is well wet and moist. So first, let me tell you a bit about the benefits and the advantages of a deep pot in comparison to common plastic bags that people use for seedling production. Now, in a bag, and you've probably seen us talking about that in our, our agroforestry course. If you haven't yet, do check it out. Here's the, a card to the lesson where we talk about planting seedlings. Um, so in common plastic bags, what's going to happen is that once the plant's tap root reaches the bottom of the bag, it will start rolling around, right? It's going to start growing in circles. And that's not good for the plant. So when you transplant it to the field, you, you need to cut that root out in order to stimulate it to re-sprout so that it will start growing vertically downwards again. So a deep pot prevents that because the deep pot has a small hole on the bottom, which serves two purposes. One is for water to drain so that it doesn't get clogged up with water. And the other is for once the root reaches the bottom of the pot, it doesn't start rolling up. And it actually, it's going to um, it's going to come out of this hole and it will die when it contacts oxygen because roots cannot have full contact contact with air. Of course, they need air mixed in the soil. So they need air in the soil mixture. But if they get in contact with 100% air, they're going to die. You can, you can see here. You can see that there's a dark root. It's dead. Okay, it's already burnt by the oxygen. So the first benefit of a deep pot is that it's it it doesn't allow for the plant to get a wrapped up in a circle root. Okay, um, so deep pots they are used uh, hanging right. So there are trays where you can let the deep pot hang. I've got a tray here, let me show it to you. So this is the deep pot tray, okay? So you just, um, you put the deep pot here and it hangs so that it, it doesn't have direct contact with the soil so that when the root comes out, it will reach air and it will die. The tip of it will burn. Okay, so this is one of the advantages. The other advantage is it, um, it requires less soil to produce a seedling. So that means that you're going to spend less soil, you're going to spend less time uh, producing the seedlings. It's going to be cheaper. Uh, you can carry them easier because it's lighter. So, you know, in this tray, I have over 200 seedlings that I can carry it with you know two hands if I was using a plastic bag I wouldn't be able to carry more than you know a few in my hands 
so this is a big advantage. And then one plant when planting, I don't need to open up a big hole, you know, because if I've if I've already got my beds prepared um, with just the aid of of an iron tool that I will show it to you, we can plant it nice and easy. Just uh, pretty quickly, you can plant a bunch of them. Okay, so I I really love deep pots, of course, because of the smaller size, you can't grow seedlings to bigger sizes, but it's always better to plant younger seedlings exactly to avoid excessive root growth. You want to plant it as soon as possible when you are planting seedlings because you you to make sure that the tap root will be undamaged and it will just um, dive deep into the soil. We always mention the benefits of planting directly your seeds on the bed instead of planting seedlings. But in this case, I'm filling up some gaps in my system, uh, which happened because of the seeds that I planted. They did not sprout. And this specific species, which I will talk about in a bit, I didn't have the seeds then. So it just produced seeds a few months ago. And that was the time I was able to collect the seeds. So I produced the seedlings to insert the seedlings in the already established system. Okay. Uh, so this plant is called, the scientific name is Clitoria Fairchildiana. It's a legume and it's from the Amazon rainforest. It's a fast growing tree. It's great for pruning. It's a secondary species in the sense of the stages of succession. And it occupies the high layer of the forest. That's the high stratum. So it's great for pruning. It produces lots of organic matter. It fixes nitrogen in the soil. So it's just a, an amazing plant. And frankly, I, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have never thought of this species as a potential plant for my region because I am in a semi-arid to subhumid climate. And this is from a very humid area, the Amazon. But surprisingly enough, it has withstand severe droughts here and although it does lose its leaves during that drought it just re-sprouts quickly and nicely after the drought um, has gone so once it starts raining in so it's got great potential and i decided to to try it out to fill in the gaps in my system right so after going into you know after talking about the benefits of a deep pot i'd like to talk a bit about the some botanic botanical aspects of a, a young seedling so that you understand a bit more about um, that in case you don't know let me find a, a seedling that has all the parts because some of them have already been lost okay so once a seedling sprouts uh, it will and there are two kinds of of but plants are divided in two categories, right? There are the, the I'm not sure I'm going to be able to talk to say that in English, but they either have two cotyledons or they have one cotyledon. Okay, the cotyledon is, uh, it's a leaf. It's not a true leaf, but it's kind of a leaf, which is this buddy here. Okay, this is inside the seed. This is where all the reserves, the nutrients reserves of the plants are. So once the seed sprouts, Many plants, uh, legumes show it very clearly. They will open up the cotyledons. So the first thing that happens when the seed sprouts is that these babies, they open up. And there was another one here, but it's fallen off already. So, you know, they open up and these will start making photosynthesis and they will also start uh, transferring the reserves that they have in order to to produce more cells and to grow the plant. So these are essential structures for initial plant growth. So while the cotyledons are on the plant, the plant is actually feeding off them. And, but eventually they're gonna die off. And then by then the plant needs to have true leaves so that they can start making photosynthesis and producing its own foods, okay? The next two leaves, they're part of the, the plumule of the plant, which is the, like the growing tip of the embryo. So you can see that they're different than the, 
the leaves, right? This is a trifoliate species, like many legumes, like beans, for example, they are a trifoliate legume. And you can see that these plants, they're just simple. These, these leaves, these first two leaves, they're simple leaves, and they are, they are inserted uh, in the same spot in the stem. Now, the, the next leaves, they won't be placed in the same spot. They're actually alternated leaves of these species specifically. So, you know, these first leaves, that they, they're part of the plumule of the plant, they really they, they they have a bit of a different architecture than the rest of the plant but they're also super important because they're the, going to be the first ones that are, that are actually going to start producing food and for the plant and then making it grow after the the cotyledons reserves are gone so this is important to know and uh, you know after you understand the, these basic principles um, usually, we're going to plant a seedling once it has uh, four to six true leaves. I That's the conventional uh, uh, way to do it. I like to do it a bit earlier, whenever possible. So basically, as soon as the roots of the plant have structured all the soil block that's inside the depot, I want to plant it because, again, I don't want... I want to avoid as much as possible for the roots of the plants to reach here the bottom uh, of the deep pot to avoid losing any root and to avoid uh, losing the tip of the tap root. I want the tap root to be undamaged so that once I plant it, it will go deep into the soil. Okay, so now let's go to the planting itself. First of all, uh, let's consider water. Okay, you need this block of soil to be completely wet. Okay, you want it to be saturated with water. That's why I like to put them inside a bucket filled with water so that I make sure that they actually absorb all the water they can. And also the place where you're going to plant your seedling needs to be well moist. So I actually have quite a bit of water here so that I make, although it rained yesterday, it didn't rain so much. So in case the soil is not well wet, I'm going to water the spot where I'm going to plant the seedling. Because if the block of soil here has more water than the soil I'm planting the seedling in, what's going to happen is that the soil is going to start draining the water from the soil block of my seedling. And that's going to cause it to have less access to water and of course i don't want that it's especially for the establishment of the plant it's really important that it has abundant water and that it doesn't lack otherwise it will have a hard time expanding its roots all around but you know after a couple of weeks once it's well established then it will be already a lot more resistance to to drought you know, if it has dropped for a few days, it won't die. Uh, it won't have its growth stalled. It will continue to grow nicely. Also, the 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 soil block has to be completely wet because it just makes it easier to take the seedling out. Okay. So the, what I'm gonna do now is first thing I'm gonna I like distributing plants before in the places I'm gonna insert them in. So I'm gonna get these seedlings and I'm going to already start distributing them all around and then I'm going to go with my iron tool and some water to make sure I water the place where I'm going to plant it and then I with my tool I'm going to plant it. So the way I like to go about this is I distribute the plants then I go with my iron tool and I mess the soil a bit on the place I want to plant. Pour some water in in order to make the soil nice and moist. And put the seedling in. And then with the iron tool again, I hit the soil a bit far from the plant just to make sure that the soil contacts the soil block from the seedling. Let's do a close one with a close up. 
in order to ensure that you understand exactly how I do it. I'm going to find a nice position for my mobile here. That's a pretty good setup. We're gonna plant it close to this pineapple that's already fruiting. Um, all right, so first thing, I've got the ceiling here. It's a beautiful ceiling. I've got my tool to take it away from the D part here. In my pocket, I've got the water and I've got the iron bar. This iron bar I showed you before in a video about planting pineapple. I really love this tool. Okay, it's a great tool. It's got a bit of a blade on one edge, one point, and then it's got a pointed a point on the other edge for breaking rocks. It's pretty heavy, but I like it because you can work standing and you've got precision so I can hit exactly on the spot I want to hit. So first thing, I, I strike the soil once just to open up a small hole. Then I'm coming in with the water to make sure that the water doesn't spread out too much and it fills up the hole. It's draining pretty quickly, showing that the soil is indeed thirsty. So then I give a bit of a, more of a stronger strike, open up the hole a bit. Since it's moist, I can take it out and the hole will not close. I will take the ceiling out of the pot. The way you do that is by lightly hitting the sides and then lightly hitting the top. Okay, and then once it starts coming out, you can pull it and voila. You've got a perfect soil block. You can see that the roots are, are already well spread around the block and therefore the block doesn't dismantle itself because the roots are structuring it. I will insert the seedling in. Oh, you, you don't want to touch the soil, all right? You want to hold the seedling by its main stem, okay? Because otherwise you might end up damaging the, the roots and the block. So I will insert it carefully because the pineapple pricks might damage my hand. Make sure, let me give you a close up. The, so the block, the soil block of the seedling, let me grab a proper angle, is fully buried. Okay, you don't want it to be sticking out of the so soil, otherwise it will dry out and damage the roots. Let's get that angle back again. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly strike the surroundings of where I planted just to bring the soil back and close to the seedlings little soil block. So there you go. This is probably good enough. Now I can give a light pull to see if it's firm. Okay, the soil is not moving, so that means it's firm. And we're good to go. So that's how you do it. That's how you plant seedlings from deep pots. Uh, I'm gonna show you the ones I planted a couple of weeks ago. They've already taken root. And that can be shown by its new shoots. You know, it start if it's it should start producing new shoots really quickly. You know, in a few days. Um, that means it's taken up nicely. So check it out. Okay, this is one of the ones that I planted a couple of weeks ago. You can see that there's new shoot coming in. Uh, this leaf was not yet developed when I planted them. They only had the the plume plumules. And just the tip of the of the new of this new leaf, and now it's already developing nicely. This plant in six months will be taller than me. Here's another one. They're spaced apart, 
every meter and a half. There's a custard apple here, another custard apple here, another sombrero here, uh, which the ant did cut, but it's already re-sprouting. Another beautiful one here, another beautiful one here, and it's close to a masaranduba. Uh, this masaranduba, I made a video about collecting the seeds of it uh, a few weeks ago. There's a card to it right here. Somebody had asked me to to show the the newly the new sprouting seed. So here it is. We've planted many of them. They they're developing nicely. This is an amazing, high quality wood. People use it for building. It's really a really strong plant. There's a nice avocado here growing on the side of the banana, and another custard apple here. So lots of things going on. Another sombrero. Uh, sombrero in Portuguese basically means something like that which gives shade. So it's uh, because it's got this very um, big and open canopy and it provides nice shade. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any questions, do leave them here in the comment section. Um, I'm going to finish planting these babies and make sure I fill in all the gaps in my in my agroforestry system. Uh, if you're new to our channel and haven't subscribed yet, do check out our full online agroforestry course. There's a link to it, a card here. Um, we've got 25 lessons and you know you can get acquainted with all the concepts that we talk about here. If you want to take a step further and support us, so that we can continue to bring you high quality agroforestry training material. Uh, do take a step further and join us, join our Patreon community. Uh, we, we're always sharing some extra content there, stuff like the sketches of our systems and just additional content to help you your, with your agroforestry learning. So do check it out and I'll catch you in the next video. I'm Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy and I'm signing out.